What's up guys, Flame McKinney here, and today I'm back for the Smog Tours Finals between High and FLCL. Now they're going to be starting with Oras first. FLCL is going to be using a bulky offense team with Azu, um, as High is going to be using a Zard Y Tar Alalo team. Interesting. Uh, we see FLCL lead with Tar as High leads with his Guard Chomp, and FLCL switches to his Lando as the Chomp goes for Rocks. Now this looks to be a rocking a Stealth Rocks Lando on FLCL's team. Highest guard chomp may be offensive and it may choose to go for um actually it could very well be a tank chomp just because you'd be a little bit weak to Bisharp without a tank chomp. But um if it is an offensive chomp, you can definitely go for an SD and start putting pressure on this landers because that'll definitely help out his extra drill. Right now, Ethel Seal's main checks to extra drill is just Azumarill's Aqua Jet and maybe Ferrothorn possibly taking a hit. Uh, and this Lando, so if he can weaken this Lando, that's going to be great for him. I do think that that Zard is probably Zard Y. It could be Zard X, though, very well. It could be Zard X. Um, if it's Zard Y, then FL Seal's only real answers to it, I guess, Ladias, maybe Titar. Uh, but High has a Titar to pursue Trap Ladias, so FL Seal's going to need to rely on his Tar, and if it's Tar is not Choice Scarf, that's not going to be a very solid check to it. Or uh, it could be Chopple Tar as well, which would mean it's probably Rocks. But, um,. It could also be Zard X, and if it's Zard X, that basically just means that it's going to help with Drill, because both Drill and Zard X are checked by that Azumarill and that Lando, so they're going to start to start overwhelming uh, the opponent. As for High's team, um, his main offensive, uh, sorry, FLCL's team, his main offensive threats is like Metagross and Azumarill and Titar. All of those Alamola can check pretty decently. Um, Alamola definitely seems to be very annoying i think a belly drum azumarill would definitely do a ton of work versus highest team highest team though high actually pulls a very passive switch into his alamomola as lander just goes for a rock which means that not only is now high pressured to spin to get his zard in but his fair thorn uh flcl's fair thorn can come in and doesn't really care that much about a burn because it just wants to lay up those hazards so the lando's going to u-turn out we see that the allo well the allo already showed its left use and the fair thorn does indeed come in as the allo is just going to skull does it get the burn it does not get the burn so it's already from the very beginning now we're going to see that fair thorn is going to be hard to pressure while rocks are up and zard is pressured um, and the rest of High's team doesn't really want to come in on this Pharaoh, so he's probably just going to have to fish for Scald Burns and then later spin with his drill, which is probably going to be the plan, but it's going to make his first, his, the, it, the, he got some advantage in the first turns of the game that I think he's sort of throwing away by going down this route. On the bright side, he's just probably going to get to weaken Ferrothorn. He goes straight for a wish, as Ferrothorn just goes for a Leech Seed, so it doesn't want to deal. It didn't want to deal with um, going straight for a Spike. Wanted to get the wish off. As High is just going to go straight into Drill, as Ferrothorn shows the Thunder Wave. Okay, so Drill is in on the Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn didn't go for the. See, I expected at least a double Leech Seed, but um, he doesn't go for the double Leech Seed or like the Spikes. Now the drill does SD as the Ferrothorn goes for a power whip, not going to do over- oh and it's a lefty's drill. Lefty's drill, interesting, so this is going to be very annoying for FLCL. Uh, he can definitely go to his Lando right now though. Um, and if High tries to predict that and goes for an Iron Head, he might end up just dying to power whip plus Iron Head recoil. So that's going to be a very risky move for him. Does he go for it though? Because it would have paid off a lot. As he does indeed go for the Iron Head and- <laughs> Now this Lando is severely weakened, the lefties is definitely helping this drill survive. Um, well, things are things are looking up for high now, things are definitely looking up. Um, I don't know, if, if I was FLCL, would you... I guess you could pull a switch to Metagross if you're aggressive. I mean, Metagross would be... not going for an Iron Head here would be really weird. You could go pull a switch to Metagross or Ferrothorn depending on the situation, I guess. I guess Metagross is going to get a little more gain, but um, because he, d he does go to Ferrothorn though, so he's going to get some Iron Barb's chip, and he's going to kind of encourage the EQ right here. The Iron Head did 25, which isn't that much, so the Iron Head is like, what, base 80, base 75? EQ is going to be base 100, so it's going to be like 25% stronger, not resisted, so like 250% of that. So that's not going to KO, not going to KO the Ferrothorn. So he does indeed switch out the extra drill to the to the guard chomp. Ferrothorn goes for a power whip. Is going to take rough skin, but not rocky helmet. So this is an offensive guard chomp. That definitely was too much damage for it to be a tank chomp. So I don't know if this guard chomp is running a fire coverage or not, because I would expect to SD EQ dragon move on this, but um. 
Uh, so Garchomp is in, Ferrothorn has been weakened, Lando has been severely weakened. But Drill has also been weakened in the process. Honestly, I feel like Alamomola is a win condition for High. I feel like Alamomola like, legitimately can just win for him. As he just goes for an SD and FLCL pulls a Swift to Latias. That was a really nice play. It accounts for a fire move. It accounts for just a straight up ground move. Because Garchomp going for a dragon move is just very unlikely right there. And if the Gar Char Garchomp does a SD, the Latias comes in and is faster. Latias goes straight for a Draco. Titar comes in and just eats that up. Oh my god. It did absolutely nothing. So the next one is going to do 20%, and then one after that, like 10%. So <laughs> this T-Tar just can just pursue this Latias, and it's going to be gone. It's probably a scarf, Choice Scarf Latias. So now he doesn't even have the option of a Scarfer or a Healing Wish user. His fastest mon on his team is probably going to be that Metagross on FLCO side. I'm guessing that the T-Tar is Choice Banded. Um, it could be DD Mega? No, in Metagross is the Mega, never mind. So it's probably, and yeah, he just switches out as High just goes for the Pursuit. So this is looking good for High, very, very good for High. Um, as FLCL is under a lot of pressure here. Uh, he goes to his Metagross, so he is going to get his Metagross in. Except, let's see, if Ala was Rocky Helmet, it'd be so good for High. The, the Rocky Helmet Mola would have been really nice, and so I'm guessing Fulcio is going to go for a Thunder Punch if he has it. He does just go for a Meteor Mash though, and gets the Attack Boost. Okay, now things are looking dangerous, because the Attack Boost in Metagross can definitely get out of control. Um, Extra Drill should still be out of range of... Um, should still be out of range of the plus one Bullet Punch, but he won't Oko with EQ, which means he's going to need some prior chip. Uh, if I was high, if see, if Alamomola can still live a plus one hit, then I would probably Scald, then sack T-Tar to go to Drill. Or actually, um, okay, he does live a hit, so he just wishes. Okay, you're just gonna wish, and then protect to heal up. It did 59, meaning that, depending on flinches and leftovers and stuff, he just goes for an EQ. Okay, so it's Meter Mash, Zen, EQ. Not Thunder Punch, might be Bullet Punch, could very well be Bullet Punch. Um, so Mola could theoretically stall this a little bit, but he's just going to risk flinches, which is not worth. As Yeah, that one does 59 again, and he does just wish again. Now he is going to get lefty, so he is healing from this uh, from this exchange. But um, yeah, he is healing from this exchange, but he's risking flinches, so... Gross, not wasting any Zen Headbutts. Now the Mola is up at 69, and there's the Zen Headbutt miss. So now it's going to get a free Scald. That That is the benefit. So FLCL is getting pretty unlucky right here. Ferrothorn is going to come straight in. Does it get burned? It does not get burned. So Ferrothorn is still not burned, which is good for FLCL because his power up is still going to do a decent amount of damage to the offensive mons. Hind just goes for another Scald. He wants that burn, and he gets it. So pressure being mounted up now and he can definitely just go for a wish and then switch to his drill so this is looking tricky um this is looking really really good for high i'm not really sure how flc wants to go about doing this he just goes for leech seed but that's not going to gain him much other than some health i guess but um or just negating the left the effect of burn but that drill can still come in i think um it's so going to be at 30-ish, and yeah, it's going to come in, because the burn is going to weaken that power whip, meaning that once dr the drill can come in and just heal up. Uh, would, have, would another spike have made a difference? 17 would put it at 27, plus rocks going to put it at like 20. Fair, yeah, I think maybe going for another spike would have been a better play there. That might have put it in range of power whip. Uh... I think so, it might have, because it would have taken off a little bit more than... It would have taken off 23%-ish. Thus, two spikes plus stealth rocks on that drill. And Power Whip did... How much did the Power Whip do last time? The Power Whip did... Uh... 45, so it would have done... Yeah, I think I think going for another spike was the best play there. Um, so the Power Whip's going to do around 22 now, and that's not going to be enough to take out the drill with just a single spike, um, with just a single spike and leak, um, and rocks, I think going for another spike there would have at least pressured that drill out. So, 
I'm not really sure. FLCL is probably... Oh, he doesn't actually go to drill, so I guess that's a roll. I guess he got a low roll earlier. He does pull the double to Metagross, which I thought might be his play. Uh, so he gets Metagross in. Uh, I felt like it would still not be worth to let Drill heal, but now he lets Garchomp heal. The Metagross could be Ice Punch, actually. Meter Mash, Zen Headbutt, EQ, Ice Punch, because that gives very good generic coverage. That could very well be it. Um, and I guess Zen Headbutt is partly to put pressure on that Rotom. Uh, not that Hai has a Rotom, but I, I'm just trying to understand Ethel Seal's movesets and how his team is structured. It looks like a classic bulky offense kind of team that Ethel Seal would use. <laughs> But, um, so if he's Ice Punch, he can go for the Ice Punch on the Chomp, but if not, I mean, the Chomp, probably not Sash. He does bring him straight the Aloma Mola, and the Metagross goes for another Zen Headbutt, but the Mola is just eating it up. Eating it up. So, and the Lefties are definitely helping it survive, although I do still think the Helmet would have been useful. Aff, the Lefties are definitely pulling in a lot of weight. Because just imagine the, the helmet, you get damage on that Lando, that Metagross, multiple times. I feel like it fits better on an offensive team like Hyze. He does not get the flinch. Ugh, so this Mola is just going to heal right back up. He's just going to go for Protect, there's no reason not to. As Ferrothorn's probably going to come in, and I think that's a that's an opportunity for Vathal Seal to just go for another Spikes, unless he wants to keep Ferrothorn healthy with Leech Seed. Okay, so we see Tarantar come in from Vathal Seal side, getting up that Sand to keep the Mola weaker. As the Mola is going to get to 60% health, he's going to go for a Protect to scout the T-Tar's move. As the T-Tar goes for a Crunch, probably a Choice Banded Crunch. Um, I'm not really sure how well Mola takes that, but Ethel Seal can definitely push for Defense Drops. If it's not going to do a KO, it probably doesn't. Um, although Choice Banded Tyranitar is very, very strong. Uh, this Mola is looking to be very, very bulky. He also wants to stall out that Sand, because right now that Sand is hurting Mola's survivability. He can just go, I think as long as Crunch doesn't Oko, he can go for a Wish, but he's always playing with crits. Playing crits by playing the Wish game. But Mola is definitely looking like it's very tough for FL Seal to beat right now, so that seems to be the main issue. As, if not, he can always just go to his Garchomp or his Tar and just get off an EQ or something of the sorts. Pressure that Lando down more, etc. So, he does... Oh, he's actually going to sack his T-Tar. Okay, so he wants to keep his Garchomp healthy. Um, and does he go to his Drill? He does indeed go to his Drill. He can just very well just go for a spin if he wants to. Um, I'm not sure if Iron Heading would be better. Let's see, if he Iron has a Lando, it's going to get KO'd, and then Zoomerill can come in, and then he won't be able to spin. So I think spin is probably his play, and if FLC wants to get back into this, he can crunch on the spin, or he can go to Lando on the Iron Head. I think this turn matters a lot, uh, depending on what they choose to do. If I were high, I would go for... If I were high, I would go for the spin, I think. I mean, this t -tour is very dangerous. It depends on what his art is. Honestly, I do think it depends on what, what his Zard set is and how important it is. Um, but... Hmm... What? Why are people tagging me? <laughs> I don't understand. Why are people tagging me? What is this? When did I come up? So he does go to... Oh, there's the EQ! Okay, I guess I guess EQ is fair because he wants to spin. And if Lando goes... I mean, the play right player now is just spam rocks. That's his play, spam rocks. So he's going to spin to get rid of the spikes. As... Oh, he just clicks knockoff. Okay. I'm not really sure why he didn't spam rocks. Because he definitely could have kept rocks up by spamming it. Because when you... When the, when the rapid spin kills Exodrill from... From the... Like, when he kills himself, he's not going to... I don't know, I would definitely would have spammed rocks right there. I guess I guess he thought maybe that High would switch out. But um, he does switch out to his Ferrothorn to sack it, as it is indeed Zard Y, which is going to be good for High. He, go he goes for the Solar Beam because he doesn't want to miss, meaning it's probably a Fire Blast Charizard. Um, and he's going to pull the switch into T-Tar. As the Zard goes for it. Oh, it is Flamethrower. That's weird. So I guess he was just predicting the switch to a Zoomerill. Um, so the T-Tar is in on the Zard. And if the Zard is Focus Blast, I can go for it here right now. If he's 
choice scarf Tyranitar and reveals the scarf Stone Edge right here, because sacking T-Tar, I'm pretty sure T-Tar would be able to do 24% to another T-Tar with choice scarf Crunch. Um, but... Oh yeah, another thing that someone mentioned in the chat that I think is a good idea is that Zard could have just not Mega Evolved. That way he saves his activation of Sun and can go for a safe Solar Beam once the T-Tar comes in. So that definitely would have been a good idea. He goes for the Focus Blast and hits though. <laughs> and yeah, oh, this is looking like a wrap. So the Azumarill comes in. Um, can Belly Drum Azumarill get out of hand? I feel like he can just go Garchomp. I feel like he doesn't really lose much by going Garchomp. Honestly, if I were him, I would go Garchomp. Because Garchomp can live a plus 6 Aqua Jet. Get some damage off, plus get some rough skin. Sand is up, which helps in terms of damaging the Azumarill. And I guess I guess Azumarill, if it's expecting a switch, would go for a play rough, which means you're sacking Chomp. But then if he goes for a play rough, and oh, okay, that's weird. I get oh I guess he just predicts FL Seal going for a play rough and goes for the flamethrower as it is a seed a citrus berry Azumarill so not really I guess he predicted the switch too and he goes for the uh, <laughs> he gets the Latios in on the Aqua Jet so High is High is playing very very aggressively it's working out nicely for him he goes for a Psy Shock as the Metagross comes in though so. Now, Heffel Seal can probably pursue this Latios. It is a Life Orb Latios, so it can try to go for a Draco to get damage on this Metagross. I'm not really sure why he's finding his Garchomp so incredibly important. I don't know, I guess it is sort of important. As he's just going to switch out to his Alamomola as Met Metagross goes for a Meter Mash. Doesn't go. What's his last move? I guess Bullet Punch. I guess it is Bullet Punch. Um, so Mola is in, <laughs> and the pressure is back on. So Mola can just go for a Wish right here. And if Ferrothorn comes in, I guess T-Wave would not be ideal though. But, um, you can definitely go for a Wish. Definitely the safest play versus this uh, in the situation. You wouldn't want to really pull a double switch to Zard when you're so far ahead, because if FL Seal stays in like he just did, it's not going to help. And FL Seal, the other thing about FL Seal staying in is that by wishing, he ensures that he can't wish again. He does just Scald again. So the Ferrothorn is getting weakened, but with the rocks not up, the um, with the rocks not up, the honestly spikes don't really make that huge of a difference. I guess it could make a difference for the Mola switching in. Uh, Azumarill's Citrus Berry getting popped is nice, nice for high, and it not being Choice Band definitely means he can switch into it very much, much more easily, uh, which is good, which is good for high. Uh, he also has Sun to weaken Aqua Jet if he needs to, if he gets put in that situation. Because if spikes go up, Garchomp will get weakened. Uh, we see FLC will pull a switch, battle double switch into Metagross, but he's not going to accomplish anything. Um, as the Amola is just going to come right back in, and he's just honestly fishing for flinches at this point. As he actually just pulls a switch back into Lando, does he go for the Scald? He does not go for the Scald, he goes for the Wish. But he can go for he can go to Zard because it, it's revealed a knockoff Lando, so he gets he's gonna get the rocks up, which is good, which is good for him. And High is just gonna go for a flamethrower, and FLC is gonna bring in his Metagross straight in. Okay, so Zen Headbutt shouldn't owe oh, Coach Charizard, and Metagross hasn't gone for Thunder Punch. He does not get the flinch, and Zard gets off the flamethrower. Metagross is down. Only thing that's left is Azumarill and Ferrothorn, and this is looking like a GG. He goes Ferrothorn clicks, uh, sorry, goes Azumarill clicks Aqua Jet. I think Garchomp can just come in. Oh, he just goes Latios. Okay, I guess he wants to save Chomp. Fair enough. But yeah, Ethel Seals, it's, it's game over. It's game over. Psyshock's going to take out the Azumarill, uh, and then Ferrothorn is not going to be able to live a Draco. Or even a Psyshock at this point. Um, as he just goes for Draco and takes out the Ferrothorn. So yeah, that's game one. Hi, showing, I think he had a very nice team matchup with the Mola in the bulky offense. Like, Mola definitely hard stopped FL Seal and was very hard to handle for his bulky offense. Physically oriented bulky offense. So, 
that's game one, and I'll be right back with game two when it happens. Alright guys, I'm back for game two. It's going to be black and white. FL Seal is going to be using a Conkelder black and white team, which is quite interesting. We're going to see FL Seal lead with the Rotom and Voltage on the Politoed, as Politoed goes for a Toxic, so it's going to be a bulky Politoed. Probably going to pr click Protect versus the Latios, as FL Seal brings in his T-Tar to set up the Sand. Politoed does indeed go for the Protect, so a nice play by, T by FL Seal right there. He's going to get up the Sand. Uh, one thing interesting to note is that FL Seal's drill is probably Sand Force. It could be Choice Scarf as well. We see Garchomp come in on a crunch, um, dealing Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet damage, being a very obvious Tank Chomp. Mew is going to come in on the Garchomp as Garchomp sets up rocks. Mew can threaten it with um, a Wisp, as it does indeed go for the Wisp, and actually hits the Politoed on the switch. Now, Mew is going to be threatened out by the Toxic, so it's going to actually go to Rotom, as High pulls the switch to Latios, so that was a nice switch, accounting for a possible switch to um, Drill, trying to absorb the Tox. Um, or also Rotom, being a little more aggressive versus the Rotom, rather than just getting off a simple Toxic, going straight into Latios, which could very well be Choice Spec. I think it's Choice Specs. It's probably Choice Specs, Latios, it could be Life Orb, um, Choice Scarf, Keldeo, Bulky Tank Chomp, Bulky Ferrothorn, Bulky Politoed, and SD or Sub Focus Punch Toxic Croak. So that's what I think looks like to me. Uh, he's going to pull a switch right out into Drill as the Latios goes straight for a Draco Meteor that is definitely Choice Specs. That did a lot. The Titor is weakened so it can't switch in directly and it can't even afford to switch in on Choice Specs Draco regardless with Rocks up unless it's very very bulky. So this is already looking really really great for high. FL Seal's water switchings are Rotom and Latios, and he definitely needs to preserve those for that Scarf Keldeo. Uh, High is going to pull a switch out as Drill goes for the EQ. So um, we saw that the Drill wasn't Mold Breaker, but it is probably sand Choice Scarf Sand Force. So that's why he switched out the Latios in the Drill. As a Drill predicts that switch goes for an EQ, he gets off some nice damage versus that Ferrothorn. Maybe also predicting Garchomp. Latios is going to come back in as Drill just goes for another EQ. Sorry about that. So we see that the drill goes for an EQ on the switch back to Latios, and it just goes for an EQ to sack itself again as the Latios goes for a Surf to take it out. FL Seal is going to bring in his own Latios, another Choice Specs Latios. Goes straight for the Draco, and that Ferrothorn is actually still out of range of another Draco, which is really nice for him. He's going to lay, lay up the spikes so that FL Seal's team is pressured a bit more. And Conkelder is just going to go straight for the Drain Punch as Toxicroak comes in. Now with the dry skin, it's not a life it's a life orb toxic croak. He goes for the sub, but that, that Conkelder is just gonna break it with ice punch. And it's probably a focus punch toxic croak, so it's not actually gonna be able to break the Conkelder. And Conkelder makes a very nice play there going for the drain punch on the switch to Keldeo. Very nice play. Actually, drain punch was doing 35, so it was still doing enough to break subs. <sighs> Sorry, uh Keldeo comes in and goes for Hydro Pump, and that did 65 to Rotom. Oh my god. Is that how strong is that? I guess is that a is that a physically defensive Rotom versus Scarf Keldeo or is that Specs Keldeo? 65 is unprecedented damage. That is a ton of damage. I don't think I don't think Scarf Keldeo can get that damage in rain versus Rotom unless it's like a, a very very physically defensive Rotom. Regardless, if Keldeo hits another Hydro Pump, that's going to be really really good for High. I think Evil Seal is going to be in a very tough spot versus this Keldeo. Uh, his Conkelder probably has Mach Punch, so he's really going to need to get that Mach Punch off on, on Kel to weaken it. He's very weak to T-Tar and to Latios at this point. His Mew's not... I guess... I don't know, he needs to beat the Politoed for the Mew to put in work. But otherwise, I think the Mew has... Mew, Mew is dangerous, depending on how fast it is. If it can outrun the Toxic Rogue, it can definitely become dangerous once Keld goes down and Laddie goes down. Um, so I guess Kel, oh, he does hit another pump, so... This is looking very tough. High, High is very, very close to winning the Smoke on Tour against FLCL, a long-time veteran, very strong and respectable player. Like, FLCL makes a lot of aggressive plays that I respect. Um, and he's going to go to his Latios. He has no other choice. I think that's a Specs killed. There's no way that's Scarf. What the hell? 65 to Rotom. There's no way that Scarf... In rain, rain can't give that much of a boost. That's doing 40% without rain. That has to be a Specs Keldeo. So, and that Latios's damage was definitely Specs. 
So I guess he doesn't have a scarf here, which is really weird because you'd think at least Toad would be scarf. Unless I just don't know my damage calcs. I mean, I'm not really a black and white player. But, um, yeah, that's that seems way too much for a Scarf Caldeo, even in rain. He's going to bring in the Ferrothorn, which is going to take that Dragon Pulse to the face and get knocked out. Um, so this is also definitely a Specs Latios on uh, FLCL's team, I guess. I don't think a Scarf Dragon Pulse would do 60. And it's probably Sucker Punch Toxic Croak, okay, because... The Croak comes in, and it can definitely go for a Sucker Punch or a Will-O-Wisp, or sorry, a Substitute. Um, I was thinking that if FLCL switches to his Mew on a Sucker Punch, then he can go for the Will-O-Wisp. That's what I was thinking. Um, I think I think Mews in black and white tend to run Ice Beam, so... He's going to pull the switch into Conk Helder. If he goes for the Sub, oh, okay, he goes for the Sucker Punch. So he's going to get his Conk in, he's going to get go for... A, he does go for Ice Punch. He does go for the Ice Punch and knocks out the Chomp. It's going to take a lot of damage in the um, in that process, though. And Keldeo can come back in. And he can go for Surf now, which is quite dangerous. Keldeo does indeed come back in. And... Yeah, this is still looking, looking really bad for... Um, this is, I guess FLCL's only saving grace right here is that High doesn't have... See, High got off that Toxic on that Laddie, and that's helping him a lot. A ton. And he's got Protect Politoed as well. He's got Sucker on Croak to force out Laddie, but that's the only way he can force it out, and nothing on his team switches into Laddie anymore. So at this point, at this point it's basically a matter of trading kills. Kong goes for the Mach, but just barely doesn't get that KO. Just barely. Ugh, so... The other, I guess the other thing High has to consider is he has to make sure he sets up a situation where he won't lose to the Mew. So the Laddie can come in. I don't really think FLCL has another choice. Uh, so he's going to have to bring in Laddie, go for another D-Pulse. Oh, he goes for T-Tar. Interesting. As he's going to sack his T-Tar. I'm confused as to why that's the play of choice. Really confused. I'm not really sure what it accomplishes. I think keeping the T-Tar alive would have been better, no? Um, at least that's what it seems like to me. I guess he just wants to- oh, I guess he wants to ensure that the poly- that the Keldeo doesn't- the dies. Like, I guess he just- I mean, is he like- I mean, Specs Lyos is just as dangerous as the Keldeo. Because I guess he can pursue to ensure that the Keldeo is going to go down, whereas if he goes Latios, he can't really ensure that the Keld goes down. A high might sack his Latios instead. He definitely needs to save his Toad, though, to keep the rain if he went Latios. And I feel like saving Latios would have been better for high than saving his Keld regardless, so I'm not really sure why FLCL chose to let go of his T-Tard, just to ensure the kill went on Keldeo rather than Latios. Because high can't afford to kill his, uh, his Toxic Croak or his Toad go down. Hai is indeed going to go to his Toad, and it's, it's going to be the same effect on Latios. It's going to protect, and it's going to protect, and Latios is going to take that... It's actually, it's going to take more toxic damage just to get that kill. So I'm not really sure why this is the play of choice. Um, so he's going to go for the Deep Pulse. Um, so I'm assuming it kills at this point. And it might be, come down to... Hmm... Toxicro comes in, he's probably going to switch to Mew, does he go for the Substitute? Or does he switch? He does goes for a Sucker Punch. I feel like FLCL has somehow managed to come back from this and win. I feel like he's somehow made- I, if the Latios tricks the Mew? So that's what I was thinking, because I think if I think FLCL should have gone Latios. That way, if he kills the Keld, he still saves his Tar and can get rid of the get rid of the rain, which would be helpful a little bit. I mean, I mean, if in the case that High chooses to save Keldeo, he can always sack his T-Tar on the Keldeo. That's what I'm saying. He didn't need to do it then when he could have just gone Latios and killed the Keld. I guess. Because like, let's say he went Latios and he Dragon Pulse. Keld went down, and then Crow came in and he went to Mew in the Sucker Punch. Same situation, except now High still has his Toad, um, and FLCL still has his T-Tar. Except, in the situation that happened, FL High just chose to go to his Toad first. 
and I think he should have just gone to his Kel he should have gone to his Toxicroak first. That was the mistake. Um, I think F I think High. Oh, I guess FLC sort of baited High into making a mistake by going into Politoed uh, rather than going to Toxicroak to set up the to pressure the Latios with the. I guess he's worried because no, no, no. Definitely keeping Toad as the play because you threaten the Toxic on Mew and Mew can't stop that. And if he switches to Latios, he's going to take Tox and take Protect damage anyway. He's going to take more damage. So High def so on the double down with the Kelly and the Titar, High should have gone to Toxicroak and just suckered. And if Fafel Seal switches to Mew, he can then switch to his Politoed and gain the upper hand. I think that would have been a very, very clean victory if he did that. Um, or at least the Latios would take even more damage. It would take... It would take another 16%. Yeah, so... Then it'll almost be in range of now it can hit it now it can throw out a few hits while it's I don't know. Anyway, so Latios is in and it can go for a trick. It can go for a trick. And then I think that would win the game. Yeah, I think Trick would win the game if FLCL stays in. If FLCL goes to his Latios on the trick. Oh he stays in. Oh it's Specs Draco and just KOs the Mew. So yeah. That's the game. Hi is your new Smogon Tour champion. Draco takes out the Latios, and that's the series. So Hi with a very, very convincing 2-0 victory against FLCO. FLCO, one of the best players, um, and very, very impressive stuff from High. His team, I think his team choices were great in both matchups. They worked really well. Um, although I'm a little doubtful of the no Scarfer on High's team, unless that actually is a choice scarf Latios, but there's a no way. No, it's double specs. So yeah, I guess High went for a very sort of counter stylish mode against FLCL, and it worked out quite well. Anyway, congratulations to High for being the new Smoke on Tour champion. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it. See you guys later.